A rich man was determined to give his mother a birthday present that would outshine all others. He read of a bird that had a vocabulary of 4,000 words, could speak in numerous languages and sing three operatic areas. He immediately bought the bird for £50,000 and had it delivered to his mother. The next day he phoned to see if she had received the bird. What did you think of the bird? he asked. She replied, it was delicious. The son sent this highly intelligent, impressive bird to his mum to bring happiness and company. But quite clearly, its purpose was never realised and its gifts were wasted. Author Mark Twain wrote, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Birthday celebrations with cake, balloons and presents commemorate each year the day we were born. But many of us spend years waiting for the day to find out why. Today could be that day. Let me read to you Matthew 5 verses 13 to 16 in the message paraphrase. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavours of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colours in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. It's as simple as that. You are here to shine. You're here to make the world look brighter and taste better. The why of your existence is to light up the world right where you are. Salt and light bring transformation. Now, purely for the purpose of research, I've been enjoying a few packets of salt and shake crisps this week. The ones with that little blue sachet of salt. Without you adding the salt, you just get a bland, unappetising taste. With the salt, your taste buds are excited and you can't help but lick your lips. It's no secret that I love food and I know many of you share that passion for good food that makes your mouth water and brings momentary happiness. In Psalm 34 verse 8 we are encouraged to taste and see that the Lord is good. And we too are called to help others taste and see that the Lord is good. For some people one of the distressing long-term effects of COVID has been a loss of taste and smell. These senses have been dulled and they are unable to experience the richness and flavour of food. The same is the case for many people's experience of God. They and we sometimes cannot taste the God flavours of this earth. God is present and active and alive in the world. His goodness and grace and love is real. But the sourness of corruption, evil and pain in the world can sometimes appear the stronger flavour. Our purpose is to bring out the sweetness of love, compassion and kindness. What's your favourite sweet? Are you a fruit pastel fan, eclair enthusiast, or do you love licorice all sorts? 
I would have to say that Skittles are my sweet of choice. These colourful fruity sweets bear the slogan, taste the rainbow. Perfect imagery when we reflect on both bringing out the God flavours of the earth and God colours in the world. Tasting the rainbow is all about experiencing life in all its fullness, just like we were created to do. Can you remember those magic painting books where you just add water and the colours emerge? I love how so simply a black and white image is transformed into full colour. Our world, which can seem very black and white, needs us to add compassion, to add love, to add forgiveness and to add God's spirit for the colours to emerge. It's as simple as that. There is so much goodness in the world. Evil makes the news because goodness is the norm. We are here to see that goodness and draw others to it. And beyond that, we are here to inject goodness into the evil that does exist. We are here to plant hope in the despair that drags us down. We are here to shine light in the darkness that brings fear. The brighter our lives, more of God's goodness is shown. Anne Frank, one of the most recognised Jewish victims of the Holocaust, arguably could have been blinded to the goodness in the world. And yet she clearly knew how to see good and how to be good in the world. Anne wrote, How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. But why is that? Because we start improving the world by expressing love where we are right now. We start changing the world through being gracious to the people we are with right now. We start transforming the world by living a life which demonstrates the goodness of God. The other night I slept with the light on after a re rather scary dream the night before. Light feels safer, calmer and more peaceful. Jesus says both, I am the light of the world and you are the light of the world. Our world is seeking safety, serenity and peace in the chaos. Our world is seeking hope in desperate days. Into the darkness, 2,000 years ago, a baby was born whose presence would illuminate the world. Two millennium on, and even in the darkest corners, on the dimmest days, and in the gloomiest circumstances, that light still shines. As John 1 verse 5 says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We are called today to both be a light and reflect the light of Christ. In the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, we clearly see that being salt and light is not an additional extra. It is quite simply why we are alive. We can feel so inadequate, unqualified and overwhelmed when it comes to sharing Jesus with our world. We get anxious that we do not have all the answers. We get shy about expressing our faith. We get complacent about the good news we have heard. But God simply calls us to shine, to be light bearers and to live as people who know the incredible news of Christ. It's not about doing more, working harder or stretching further. It is about being the person you were created to be. A child of God reflecting his love and his goodness. When people interact with you, do they feel better about themselves? When people speak with you, 
do they feel more hopeful about life? When people see you, do they believe that there is a God of love in the world? When people catch just a glimmer of you, do they see the light of the world? We live in a beautiful world with an awesome God, but we need to be a light to illuminate that beauty and dispel the darkness. What a privilege that each and every one of us can light up the world around us. Whatever our circumstances, whatever our experiences, whatever our skills, all of us can shine with joy, glow with love and radiate with kindness because that is why we are here. God bless you.